So after somewhat dissing the um, alpha brace of sanding pad in uh, the last section of the video, I started using it here on the tank to get around this little attachment joint. And um, it's wet and it's holding up. Um, last time I used it I must have been just going at it really heavy and, and I must have just hit it wrong and got the water up underneath the uh, the uh, adhesive, but it's, it's hanging tough now. I mean, it nails me to go all around this little joint, and uh, so far, so good. It also allows you to put, uh, put a good amount of pressure over a wide area, something that sandpaper uh, would not really allow you to do. So this is coming along uh, nicely. Um, we still have a ways to go. I've sanded down the bottom two-thirds of the tank for the most part. Uh, I may get a little bit um, smoother than that. I haven't really touched the, the top here though. Still a lot of work to do there. So I've been sanding on the steel tank here for about an hour and a half. And I've gone through about um, three pieces of 150 grit sandpaper getting it uh, pretty smooth. It's not completely smooth, but uh, for the purposes of uh, applying a textured paint over this, it's, uh, it's pretty much smooth enough. So we're going to set this aside and turn our attention back to these solid rocket boosters. Now the solid rocket boosters um, are divided obviously in, into halves just like the, uh, the fuel tank. And I wanted to point out something here. Um, the solid rocket boosters have a line that runs right down the side of the booster. Now the smart thing for our mold maker here would have been to mold this into one of the two halves and that way the seam would run right down the edge of it and it would require almost no filling but instead they molded two identical halves and that's certainly more cost effective but than two separate molds but they molded two um, identical halves and the seam is split right down the middle of this line and that's not a good thing from the model's perspective because now what uh, I've had to do is I've had to deal with this compound curve seam, not compound, but a, a pretty abrupt curve, all the way to the length of this booster. And I've had to sand each and every little segment, trying to take care to uh, not to destroy the little raised segments all the way through. So not so good. We got it uh, done but uh, it wasn't a whole lot of fun. On the other hand, this side was pretty easy. You don't have to worry about it so much. You do have some segmented lines, but not nearly as difficult as that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the tops on here, the tops of these boosters. The tops of the boosters include the retro package, which is when the booster actually burns out the rockets fired to detach it from uh, the external tank and they fall back to earth. All right, so, we're going to take the trusty testers tube blue again and we're going to run a bead <clears throat> right around here. I don't have the uh, precision applicator on here. I don't always use that. Sometimes it's, it's a good thing, but most of the time you don't need it. All right, so that's on there. The good thing is there is an alignment pin here, and it's no problem getting this on the right place. So I'm just going to tack that there. Okay, again, the tester tube glue works really good. Like I said, you can tack it on, you can move it around, make sure it's aligned like you want it. And then come back with something a little more permanent. In this case, we're going to use Tamiya Extra Thin. I'm just going to run it right around this edge. And cements like this work through capillary action. And they're really quite nice. Um, you know, for the longest time, we didn't have anything like, like this. Just 
Just work your way around it a little bit at a time. It's not going to uh, cause any damage to your finish really unless you just keep pouring it on because it evaporates pretty quick. started get a kind of a push and that is gonna hold just fine we'll come back and and then clean up that seam now last thing I want to say before ending this segment is um I pointed out uh, earlier that I was using white putty squadron white putty so that uh, it would be easier to cover we got to the painting phase, but it occurred to me, after looking at some of the video work, that you really can't see this very well on video. You can't really see the putty work that I'm doing. So what I'm going to do here is for the remainder of our, our video builds, I'm going to switch to a squadron green. And squadron green is going to allow you to see exactly where the putty is and how it, uh, it blends in with the plastic. It's just a little bit better um, for, for video. So as it turns out, uh, the solid rocket boosters we put together is not all of the solid rocket booster. Um, as it turns out, about that's about four fifth. The bottom portion, which includes the exhaust nozzle, is a separate separate assembly. I've already got one of them done here. I've got the uh, parts cleaned up for the other. Um, it gives us an opportunity here to look at three different types of glue and specific applications that, that I prefer. Again, um, starting out with the testers tube glue. I'm going to go ahead and um, put a little bit on each little locating pin, or in this case, the receptacle side. Okay, let that sit there and work for a minute. And I'm going to take um, this Tamiya cement, which is a little bit thicker. You've seen me use this before, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that on this fairly thick section right here. All right, and then we're going to put these halves together. So you can move this around, kind of line it as you need to. Now, I'm going to use it to me extra thin. Again, this is just one of several liquid glues that are similar to this. It's just what I happen to have here now. Uh, Tanax is another one. Just going to run this together. push got the other side Push, make sure all these little ribs are aligned nicely. Better to get it now than come back and fix it later. If you wanted to, you could run some more liquid glue down here 
um, to make the joint a little bit stronger, but I think this will be fine. Along here on the bottom. Okay. So, this is nice. This is good. Now I need to get this portion. Now there's a pin here uh, to locate it with. Do a little test fit. That's going to be fine. I'll take the testers to glue again. Put it right there on that locating pin. Then I'm going to use a slower acting thicker Tamiya, stuff in the orange bottle, and pile this all around here. Again, you can do this because it doesn't dry so quick, and um, it'll set up a real strong bond when it's ready, when it's dried properly. Alright, and just put these together. A little pressure on them. Now we're not completely done yet because I'm going to take the Tamiya extra thin again. And I want to run it, run it right around this base. Voila, there you go, then do it.